Ag Spotlight. I'm Chrissy Wozniak. My guest today is a crop protect protection product manager with Winfield United. This agronomist focuses on understanding the complexities of protecting crops from pests and diseases and recommending sustainable solutions that benefit farmers. And Winfield United is the seed, crop protection products, agriculture services, and agronomic insights business of Land O'Lakes. From seed to supply chain, their comprehensive product and technology offerings promote efficiency in every facet of farming. From southeastern uh, Minnesota, I'd like to welcome John Zuck. Welcome and thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Chrissy. I'm so happy to be here. So you were raised on a dairy farm near Willow River, Minnesota. So can you tell me a bit about your background, how you came to work for Winfield and how being a farm boy has, has uh, benefited you through your career? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the farm boy aspect is probably the biggest part of it. But, uh, you know, I grew up on a dairy farm so uh, and, and also worked on a dairy farm all the way through college that helped support the, the college effort there. Um, but I was always told and, and always thought like, hey, you can always come back and work on the dairy farm. Just go get smarter. Go get go get an education. And uh, you know, I, I made that through graduate school. Um, got a degree from the University of Iowa in biochemistry, and uh, really wanted to still get back into agriculture. So that led me to pursue being an agronomist. And and I guess 14 years later, here I am today, uh, a product manager for Winfield United. So I think I've applied all those learnings um, and then some all the way through my uh, so so far career. And that's been great for me. Yeah, that's fantastic. Really good base for what you do, for sure. So tell me about Winfield United and why Land O'Lakes chose to found it. Okay, so I think what we really have is Land O'Lakes is a, is a dairy-based cooperative. So we have three factions, actually four or two Land O'Lakes currently. There's the dairy uh, foods business. There's the Purina, the feed business. Um, then there's Winfield United, which is the crop um, nutrients, crop protection business. And then recently we've added Truterra. So that's the soil health um, and the, uh, you know, the initiatives around the carbon market, all those sorts of things. So I think we really have tried to come together. Land O'Lakes has really tried to come together to tie um, all the things that a farmer would need or look for in a, in a cooperative and, and base that on that platform. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's very useful. Um, and I often think of things in terms of cartoons. So if you think about a, a bug on a crop and you release a bird and the bird eats the bug, but then there's too many birds and then you release the cats and then there's too many cats and you release the dogs. There's too many dogs and you release a tiger and it eats all the dogs, but also eats all the humans. So because biologicals are living organisms, how do they work and how do we know it's the right treatment and safe for the whole food supply chain? Yeah, absolutely. You reminded me of a book I read to my kids. It's called um, there was an old lady who swallowed a fly yeah, and then that's it just right. keeps going from there <laughs> and, and so on and so forth. So it's interesting. I mean, biologicals, I, I look at them a few different ways and how they, you ask how they work. Well, it depends on which biological you're, you're asking about to actually technically describe how it works. But an overview of that is I always like to say biologicals really find their niche in making crop efficiencies. So if you think about how a crop can become more efficient, Maybe it's more efficient in nutrient uptake from the soil. Um, maybe a biological makes the crop more efficient in moving some of the components around it throughout the plant. Or even maybe later in the season, the biological it, it makes the plant more efficient in maybe it's cell division and helps the uh, cells. Maybe these are cells that are making a kernel of grain become bigger and larger so that the plant is more fecund or has more offspring. All those sorts of things are what biologicals do and, and just making the plant efficient. So I look at biologicals as kind of being the key to unlock the door to make that plant uh, be more efficient or maybe in this day and age, maybe it's more like a cheat code, right? How do you find the cheat code to get unlock higher yields or, or more efficient plants? Right. Yeah, that's good. Great points. And is it, so we're talking about they can be bacteria right? And, and what else? Correct. Mm -hmm. Or is it always yep, so bacteria? Biologic yep. So biologicals, I, I think that's like a broad overview. Um, right. We split them up at Winfield United. We try to split them up into three different sanctions or, or kind of categories. So the biological market, as it said, is consists of three things. Those are what I would say true biologicals. Those would be living things. So those could be bacteria, primarily um, the products we find in that space are bacteria, but they could be fungus, they could be 
the other things as well, but those are the true living organisms. Then there's biostimulants. Biostimulants would be categorized as any kind of, um, I guess, output from a living organism. So that could be a plant extract, that could be an amino acid, that could be something, a byproduct from animal production market, whatever that might be, that would be the biostimulant. And then there's PGRs, and PGR stands for plant growth regulator. I look at them as the specific hormones that are um, used in the plant to target um, functions that that plant would then do. So I think that's how we split them up into three categories. And that whole umbrella is called the biological space. Wow. Wow. That's, that's fascinating. And what makes biologicals, like the whole market, con a confusing space for farmers? Yeah. So I think the confusion lies within the inconsistency of a response. And, mm -hmm. and I believe we're still looking for the how do we optimize that consistency? But one of the things, it's not that the biologicals don't work because the minute I say it's they're inconsistent in responding, where he goes, well, see, you know, they don't work and that's why I don't like to use them because I can't optimize my response. What I would say is maybe we quite don't know the question in agriculture of, of what to ask of what efficiency do we need them to unlock for us? And a lot of times that efficiency might change by the season or by the crop or by the timing. And so when we just try to take one biological and put it into a, a crop system and say, well, did it work or didn't work? I think we also have to ask the question, well, when we put it in the system, was that one of the limiting factors that it needed right. to unlock for that crop to get the response? And, and so that's where we're focusing a lot of our research and our efforts to identify maybe where we can be a lot more efficient in placement and positioning of those products. All right, well, that makes sense. And the EPA strictly regulates the use of crop protect protection products, pesticides. Are biologicals or biostimulants, are they regulated by the EPA the same way? Yes, yeah, so that's interesting. Uh, most of the time, the biologicals and, and I guess the biofertilizers are regulated more uh, from the state side and more like a, like think of a fertilizer product. So there's a lot less regulation. There's less time involved, less money involved, less hurdles. So a lot of times we'll see more products in that space. Okay. Um, if a biological wants to make, if a biological product wants to make a specific claim, uh, like a pesticidal claim, then they do have to be regulated through the feds. And that's a similar process to what we are familiar with, like the, the pesticide and the labeling. So there's kind of, it depends on what the claims are, are wanting to be made. But for the most part, um, the biostimulants and, and just the straight biological markets are not as, there's not as many hurdles um, to overcome as there are for other pesticides. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. And what does Winfield United do to help its retailers? And then of course, ultimately the farmer uh, decipher biologicals. How do you help? Yep. So one of the things that we like to do is there's a lot of information in this space and, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of products and how do we actually identify the opportunities that our retailers and farmers can take to be advantageous in getting a response? And so what we put together um, to try to make it simple is we call it the biological directory. So it's, okay. it's I think of it, I, I jokingly internally, I call it like the biological menu. Like right. if you're looking at a menu, you know, tell me, put a little star next to your product and say, well, this one is the special for today, or it does this certain thing. And so we like to cat first off categorize the products and then talk about here's what they specifically do. Because I think as growers, we need to get a lot better at saying, this is my problem. What does a product need to do? Instead of saying, here's the product, now it's going to address all these magical things that we're may maybe not too sure actually happen, or maybe they're not a limiting factor in your system. So I think we start with that biological directory to start narrowing down maybe what the retailer or grower might be looking for in a specific in instance, and then potentially using that to identify a product that would that would fit the need or, or the situation. Yeah, that makes sense. And can you tell me about the the cool, like unique way that Winfield United tests biologicals and biostimulants? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we call that, and we've toy we've coined that uh, the biological testing platform. Now that's that's a pretty unique name, right? Yeah. But uh, we split that up into two different uh, portions. There's the controlled environments or greenhouse portion, and then the infield testing portion. 
So the controlled environments portion, uh, we're just getting that up and going, um, but that consists of an uh, uh, entire greenhouse that's dedicated um, to a special uh, sensor that can scan the plants real time uh, on a, on a uh, hourly basis if we want to, to detect things that the human eye can't necessarily see. So as you can imagine this, we can have a whole greenhouse full of plants. We can have these sensors um, going over those plants on an hourly basis, or maybe every four hours, whatever that is, and trying to pick out the differences between these products, that's going to help us potentially screen the products and maybe give us an indicator of what they're maybe doing in the plant. So then when we take them out into the field and do the, the testing, we can position them and maybe in an environment to, to test for those components. Okay, so that's the infield or controlled environments way that we're testing it. So we'd like to screen the products first. Once we screen those products, we bring them out into the field. And when I say in the field, that's what we call our answer plot system. Okay, okay. so we have our answer plot system that's uh, mainly testing in corn and soybeans where we put the products in a different uh, scenario um, compared to like products, but in different scenarios, whether it's, it might be high nitrogen environment, low nitrogen environment, and then test for yield. So do we get the components that we need to get higher yield? And then try to get the answers of, well, why did it give us a higher yield? Was there a difference in nutrient movement? Maybe that's a tissue sample. Was there something going on in the soil? Maybe that was some type of soil sample. So we try to evaluate those products. And then at the end of the year, we release the information and data to try to say, here's the products that performed and, and maybe why they did or how they did. Right. Really interesting. And do you have some specific examples of biologicals or, or plant growth regulators that have made it through this rigorous testing? and got that stamp yep. of approval? Yep, so that's an interesting question. Uh, everybody wants to know, okay, great. You, you got this great testing platform. What, what did you guys learn from it? Yeah. And the interesting thing was, it, so this has been going for two years now. We've tested 41 different products from 29 different companies. Um, so pretty extensive, at least for two years in getting up and going. And what we've done is we've launched uh, one external product through this platform. We were, we're having four commercializ commercialization discussions around other products, but then we've also looked at some of our own and existing portfolio as well. So um, I'm just talking about the new products. It doesn't necessarily account for what we already had currently existing because we wanted to test that too. So I know you asked for specific products. The one that we did commercialize just recently is a biostimulant and that is called Yield On. Um, we position that primarily on corn at tassel timing. And that's uh, just a combination of plant extracts that are really supposed to help the plant move the sugars um, from the leaves to the grain and then make that grain uh, kernel bigger to help enhance yield that way. So that would be one specific product that we moved here in the last two years. Was that How is that applied? So that is applied foliar. Typically, uh, we tested it with a tassel fungicide. So that timing would be with a tassel fungicide application on corn. Okay. And then what are some tips for farmers who are looking to select a biological and maybe try it out on their farm? So I think I always like to start the conversation off with the growers is what exactly are you looking for the product to do? Mm -hmm. Are you looking for a, do you think you have issues with your soil? Do you think you have issues with maybe nutrient uptake? How is your fertility level? We yeah. have to start getting all those things right um, before we can start making a recommendation. If the grower can say, here's what I want the plant to do, I need help with nutrient uptake, then we can start going and using that biological directory to try to, to try to find the product that works best for him or her. Right. And then um, with the crazy environment we've been through over the last few years, the cost of inputs and, and, you know, commodity pricing, like it, it's just been a mess kind of, um, but positive so far, what advice would you have to producers? Um, coming out of this, I guess. Yep. So I think what, what I always like to tell producers to do is don't be afraid to try something. Okay. So, so do trials on your own farm, see how it works. Everybody's system is different. Everybody's approach to managing that system or getting yield out of that system is different. Mm -hmm. So just because we have a testing platform doesn't mean that what we see is exactly going to be the same that you see. Um, so I think that's important. Test them and vet them on your own farm and in your own system first. The other thing that I would recommend farmers do is triangulate your decision. So if you're working with one individual and, and they're saying, hey, this is the product or here's what I think you need, 
always use a triangulation point. So use another individual, um, have multiple points of contact to make sure that that decision that you made on that product, number one, has the, the data behind it. It belongs to the crop that you're actually wanting to use it on. And maybe you have a couple different people that are that are smart or know something in that environment that can give you hints about how to make that work better. So I call that the triangulation method. Use a bunch of different points of contact to try to find the right decision. Yeah, great advice. And I have one last question for you. So why do you personally serve the egg industry in this way? And what's your greatest passion in all of it? Yeah, so I, I like doing this. I mean, the biological piece, as you can imagine, I we learn stuff every single day mm -hmm. in biologicals and, and in agriculture in general. It's every day is a, is a learning curve um, for myself and for all the individuals. So I think that's why I feel the need to serve and uh, and save save the message to the public and, and then also support the research and in, in the environment that Winfield United creates to the growers. Amazing. Well, thank you what, for what you do. Yes. Thanks, Chrissy. Appreciate the time. Yeah. And where can people find you? Uh, so I can be found uh, primarily, I just say email or call me, um, yeah. but um, social media contact uh, through the Winfield the United social media. The other thing that we like to support is our retailers. So if you uh, if you need help with anything that I talked about today, contact your uh, retailer and they'll help you get in touch with the nearest Winfield United representative. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining to me joining me today and thank you for all of this information. Uh, I feel like uh, it's less confusing definitely and much more clear at the end of the conversation. So thank you so much for that. Yep, you're welcome, Chrissy. Have a good day. Me too. And thanks to all who are watching or listening. If you want to learn more, the links are provided in the show notes. I would love it if you subscribe to North American Egg Spotlight on YouTube, Rumble, Telegram channels, or to the podcast, which is available on Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts and have a great day.